Okay, so, um, so I, know, I get it. I mean, I kind of relate to my own yeah. experience. There, you know, there um, can be a, a difficult life, this life. And if you're doing spiritual work, you get the freedom of strong spiritual connection and you get the intuition of what it would be like to leave this place and just exit into the light and not have the burden of this. And then as soon as you have that, I think it's, a, it's quite a classical thing with a lot of spiritual seekers, then as soon as you want to be, just leave the body and go off into the light, you know, su suddenly you remember you've got to look after something or somebody or some person. So you, it's almost like, and that for me that is, uh, it, it does require a level of spiritual discernment because sometimes that looking after is coming out of the ego and sometimes it is coming out of a karmic contract that needs to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So it can be different in different contexts. So in some spiritual seekers, the right thing to do is to let um, the, uh, the, uh, the ego aspect of thinking it needs to take care of the person go and let the person go. In some other situations which are contextually uh, different, uh, there can be a prior lifetime in which there is a reversal and a karmic payback mm. and a karmic contract that needs to be undone. So in some, in some aspects it can be, if you like, God's will, or if you muscle test, um, you do have to be there and fulfill the karmic contract. Because it can be like, for example, mm. It could be like, uh, like uh, in the other lifetime when you were in need and they were having a hard time, they sacrificed for you mm. and thereby alleviated your suffering at great cost to themselves. So for you in this lifetime and now they're back in a place of need and you're here to, to you can now pay that off and it's currently the right thing for you to do. Even if it, you have to cause a bit of a sacrifice on your part to just be there and to help do that and undo that karmic contract that, that uh, payment maybe is the wrong word but it, it's like you know if someone's sacrificed for you in the mm. past and you've got an opportunity now it is the right thing to do for you to to be there uh, for them to, um, uh, and some other aspects you know uh, like in codependency love addiction uh, attachments where um, this is purely coming out of an ego uh, an ego thing, an ego motive. Actually, the right thing to do is to let that go and just release that attachment, cut the cord, and, and let the person go. And, it, and that's in the highest good for both of you, rather than for you just uh, wallowing around and trying to save them all the time. So it can be, it can be different in different contexts. If you pray and meditate, or if you have access to muscle testing, get it muscle tested, do pr praying, and then Sometimes it may seem, if it comes to you, that you need to stick around for them and that would be serving the highest good, you know, uh, serving the highest good for, for all concerned, then the uh, thing to do is, um, uh, what you do is you, you're there for them, but you take, you take out the ego resistance so that you can still be there for them, but your ego doesn't have to suffer it. Uh, so what does that mean? You know, because generally speaking, if you want to exit the world, you're, you're cutting all ties, all attachments to everything, and then you go off into the light. But if you're called to stay here to, say, help somebody, um, what's creating the suffering is uh, the resistance to doing that. Yeah, so the resentment, the grievance, the anger, the, you know, like it's like, oh, I, w I would just like to let everything go and be free now but you have to be there. So that means the ego is resentful that it has a, it has a responsibility. But that's comprised of little belief systems and resentments which you can transcend. Uh, so uh, the Course says, you know, the only thing that m creates stress in this world is when there's meaning or projection attached to something. So if someone said to me, and that's probably because of all the baggage like if you're looking after someone or if, if someone needs you, the only reason that seems to be difficult is because there is a baggage associated with that. You know, because anything that you do on a daily basis that has no baggage around is effortless. So if I said to you, you've got to water a plant, you know, I mean, you might be angry, you have to water this plant every day. Um, but actually, if you transcend that, those resentments and those grievances, 
so that it becomes a neutral or meaningless activity, then the plant can still be watered, but it, you, your ego isn't suffering, needing to water the plant on a daily basis. So it's the it's the projection of you know even the if you have acceptance that you need to water. I mean, say water a plant is a metaphor for looking after a person, but then I just have to process out. You know, I don't want to be here to look after this plant, and uh, you know, for the rest of my life. You know, it's like, but that's a meaning and a projection. So I can make that meaningless. I can make my resentment that I don't want to be here to be available for the plant go. I can make that meaningless. I can cancel my belief. I can place the plant into God's infinite light, or the person into God's infinite light, and I pray. For. So what I'm doing, or I can cancel my belief in this scenario, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I have. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking up my ego's noticing of, so that event can still occur. Like, uh, you know this from, uh, like if you're a therapist or you're a spiritual teacher or a counselor, you know, you don't allow yourself to be attached. You know, you remain that detachment, or if you're in the observer. So the observer is able uh, or you can do it with the observer technique. So when you, when you keep, if you, ha like, let's say, you, you can see it when I talk about a plant. Like, if you can, is it possible to water a plant every day in the observer? Yes. Is there any effort or any stress in water? No, there isn't. But why then is it, why then is it stressful and resentful to do another, you know, to look after a human being? Well, because of all the baggage. Or if you can, if you keep going to the observer, in that. So let's say someone's ringing you up and say, look, I have to tell you how difficult life is and I've got no one to talk to. And they call you up. Now, if, you, if you, all your ego baggage is activated, it becomes draining and you, you feel the burden of that. So if you can, if you can, you can transcend that. So it's like you're not there. The personal you is not there. But grace is there. But the grace doesn't have the baggage around it. So when there is symbolic uh, meaning and attachment and valuing or karmic baggage around a person, then it becomes heavy. So, uh, but when it's some, something that the baggage has been taken out, it becomes very light. And it's almost like you're not, do, you're not doing the, the support. It's like the observer or the grace or that is there. Is you're not there, but something else is there for them. And that's when it becomes light. It's only the personal ego baggage that makes the thing heavy. Um, also, you want to transcend, like if it seems like it's necessary, to, I mean, this comes with responsibility and, and you can't leave or exit for some reason, karmic reason, then you want, you want to like, you want to take out your, your personal, per, the person in you that's relating to that. So when you're in the observer position, there's no you there. So you know when you flip into the detached observer, it's like everything is effortless. And you can even, like, if people can be, like, saying the most heavy stuff, you know, and if you're in the detached observer, it, it won't hit you. As soon as you go into your ego and start relating from your ego, then heavy stuff can hit the ego. But heavy stuff can't hit the detached observer. Hence, you know, a Buddha said that, Buddha, uh, Buddha said, if you're... I'll, I'll paraphrase what Buddha said. If you're a person, if you're in uh, uh, separation, if you're identified with your body and mind, the ego mind, then you'll experience old age suffering and death. You know, the suffering of responsibility, the suffering of people in torment, the suffering of all of this is real, and, and your person, your ego, has to handle the suffering of others. But once you get to enlightenment and, and you, you, you're no longer buying into um, the drama of this world of suffering and pain or the illusion of it all then you're there from the detached observer which actually has more power to handle this stuff than the ego self ego self will get overwhelmed with the amount of pain and suffering and personal responsibility so it is possible if you're called to stay in the world you just have to transcend the person having to handle the responsibility and go to delegating that off into the infinite. It can be a lot of work, you know, cancelling beliefs. Um, sometimes you can fulfill a karmic contract from a past lifetime through the anti-karma prayer, which Hawkins talked. So I pray for, so let's see, if I'm now responsible, uh, if I'm, if, 
you know, it could be that I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who was a burden on others in this lifetime and past lifetimes. Maybe, you know, um, that could happen, like for example, let's say in a past lifetime, I was like, I neglected myself and I was just a pain in the ass to my parents, for example. And at the end of the day, I, they had to pull their hair out and just be there for me and take care of me that whole, for the whole lifetime. So, you know, I pray for forgiveness. Sometimes that can then end the, end the karmic contract quicker because you now delete that, you know, through, through um, that deletion of the karmic contract. So, um, yeah, and just pray for a miracle to see it differently or pray to see peace in the situations that what you now see in it uh, and, uh, and, and then pray to the Holy Spirit um, to reveal to you what, what is the lesson involved in this, in this relationship. So once you know intuitively what is the lesson, because we are, I mean, if this lifetime is just, in every moment, it's showing what we need to transcend, you know, like life is perfectly aligning. Uh, this lovely word, you know, set up. In every moment, it's a setup, And things which are heavy are setups we need to clear. For some reason, like life is shoving this thing in front of your face. And, and there's a setup in it so that it's creating suffering. So um, when you see what the setup is, then you can cancel, pray, or pray for forgiveness to clear the setup quicker than if you don't know what the setup is. Uh, so that the person, you know, the universe is, is putting the limited self, the separated self, in the setup, whereby it's like tormented until it, it, it gets what it needs to do to clear that setup mm. and be free of it. Yeah.